Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes Postgres. My name is Lucas and today we're going to talk about surviving without a super user as well as reserved connections in Postgres 16. We'll start with this blog post by Robert House, who's committed a few improvements to the Postgres 16 branch that reduce the need for using a super user role in Postgres. As Robert mentions here, there isn't really a good way of achieving the benefits of a super user without giving full access to the operating system account. You cannot make a role that can perform ordinary administration tasks, but cannot break into the operating system user account, the one that the Postgres server runs as. It's really hard to make this work exist in Postgres. What Robert mentions here is some people have actually hacked the Postgres source code to do this in early releases. The most common example that you might be familiar with is the RDS super user role in Amazon RDS and Aurora, which essentially pretends to be super user, but it's really not. And the reason that the AWS team added that was because they did not want to have people accessing the operating system on the database server directly, but they did want to give folks a couple of privileges that regular roles don't have. Postgres 16 brings a better way of doing something like an RDS super user, but brings it into core Postgres and adds a few additional improvements that are not there today on your regular Postgres databases in the cloud. First of all, Robert addresses the impact of having create role. When you have create role in your standard Postgres and you're not in a patch version of Postgres, then create role is essentially something like super user. And the reason is amongst create role being able to modify other users without restriction in current releases and create role type roles being able to, for example, set the connection limit or change the password for other roles, they can also grant people the PG execute server programs role. And this is not the only way of doing it. But this lets you run something as the Postgres user on the operating system side, which ultimately lets you get super user. If you have create role on a regular Postgres database, it's essentially super user. And what all the cloud providers have done is they've patched it out and they've modified this because it would otherwise be a security problem for them. In Postgres 16, this is fixed. Create role no longer can hand out memberships in other roles without restrictions. Instead, what they need is this admin option setting. If you have admin option on another role and you have create role privileges, then you can modify that role. There's also more restrictions around settings like create DB, replication, bypass RLS to make sure that the create role user actually has permissions to do that. If you are super user, the thing you can do, which is very useful, is you can access other roles objects. You can access a table that's not owned by yourself. And it's essentially the same as being able to set a role to any user. This, as Robert notes here, is really the core of a super user experience. When I'm the super user, I'm able to access anything in the system, modify anything in the system, and through that, administer the system. Previously, you could already grant a role to yourself and through that be able to do set role on it, but it gets quite tedious when you're creating a bunch of users. In Postgres 16, there is this new create role self-grant option, which automatically, when you're creating a new role, grants it back to the user that was creating that role. That sets up a system where you have an almost super user that's able to access all the other roles, but doesn't have to have actual super user. This is going to be very useful if you have a lot of users. For example, imagine you create different database users for an RLS-based setup. In situations like that, it's going to be really useful to just manage those users more easily. In addition to this, there are a few other improvements, but the important restriction right now is that if you wanted to create subscription or create event trigger, those still do require actual super user access. The other thing I want to mention is Postgres 16 introduced this reserve connections setting. This is another aspect of how super user and almost super user differ. If you're a super user, you have access to what Postgres calls super user reserve connections. Super user reserve connections are a way of being able to connect to the database even when all the connections have run out. This is very useful if you're reaching a connection limit and you want to just go and stop some sessions. If you don't have actual super user, then you're treated the same way as everybody else. In Postgres 16 it introduces the reserve connection setting. There's a new role called PGUs reserve connections. If you have that role granted, then you're able to connect even though connections are otherwise exhausted because of these extra reserve connections, you are able to get into the database still. It's essentially another way of giving an almost super user a way to get into the database 
and get that benefit that otherwise only super user has. Hopefully, we'll see more consolidation around how cloud providers handle this almost super user challenge with Postgres 16, and it will make it easier for folks to manage things consistently and make sure that you grant the right permissions to the right users. Thank you so much for listening. This was 5 Minutes of Postgres. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear about next week's episode and talk to you next week. Thank you.